All right, thank you so much, Nate. Thank you, and hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Michael, he said, it's another wonderful hour of learning here with Michaels in favor of Castell USA. My name is Lay Ralston. I'm also known as Mommy Lay on the internet. Um, before I get started with the class, we really want to thank you all for being here because we know that your time is precious, so thank you for spending it with us. Today's class is going to be super fun, spooky fun, <laughs> not really like those terrifying, scary movies, but we're going to draw some kawaii Halloween um, characters, and we're going to use some Albert Durer watercolor pencils. Uh, before we get started with the class, I will talk to you a little bit about the supplies that we'll be using today. I uh, will do a little bit of warm ups. Um, this might take a long time, so it might go a little faster than usual, but if you're playing along with me today, um, don't worry because this class is recorded like what Nate said, and you can always come back and watch the replay once it's uploaded on Michael's YouTube channel. So I think I am excited. I hope that you are. I'll switch over to my overhead camera and we'll get this class started. Okay, here we go. So I have my supplies ready here in front of me. Um, I am using a Faber Castell watercolor pad and I have some pencils, mechanical pencils, and I do have a 2B here. I guess I grabbed the 2B so it's get a little darker because sometimes when I'm sketching, it's hard to see on screen. Um, I have my water. Since we're working with a watercolor pencils today, I have an eraser. This is a dust-free eraser, and this is a kneadable um, eraser. I really love it. You'll see me use this a lot later and then I have some water brush. If you don't have a water brush, it's okay. If you have just regular round watercolor brushes, that will work just perfectly fine. Um, I have some water in here. I have two bowls <laughs> here. Um, I have one to clean and um, the, the colors and then to clean the brush thoroughly because it's really important. I also have some baby wipes just to dab some colors away. If you have paper towels, that will work fine too. And then watercolor pad. I have my Albert Dewar watercolor pencils. I love these things. It's really awesome. Um, if you have any water soluble markers, what you're using today, that will work just fine. If you have some watercolors, that works great too. If you have the Faber Castell, the um, Faber Aqua, that will work as well. So are you excited? I'm excited. Don't go away. My, my eraser is going away. Um, we're gonna get this class started with some sketching first because it's really important. Oh, you've seen some of my <laughs> upcoming classes that we're gonna have, but I'll switch over to this one. All right, you can do this in landscape mode like this or portrait one, whichever you want. I'm using a nine by 12 watercolor paper. If you have a smaller piece, that's fine too. I just like to draw much bigger, especially when we're doing a class like this so you guys can see much better, right? Okay, so when we look at my type of artwork, what I create most of the time, it's called kawaii style or the cute, you know, kawaii is a word means cute in Japanese. And it's just simple, really basic shapes. I know sometimes um, I say this, probably all the time if you're not new to my class, I keep repeating myself that sometimes we just really try to overcomplicate things when we're creating. And I think one good, um, one thing that I'm really proud of when I'm working with um, students when we're doing classes like this, is I'm really proud to say that I am not one of those people that were born with magic abilities when it comes to art. I, I was not. So I started without knowledge of how these drawings work. So I work my way and just practice and practice. So I want you to be really present and I want you to erase the thoughts that, you know what, I cannot draw. Because once you really stop um, thinking of that and you say, you know what, I'm really gonna try. And that's where progress is going to happen. Okay, so we're gonna do a lot. I'm not gonna try not to talk too much, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> Sometimes I can't help myself. Okay, so we have in the, in the drawings, we have pumpkins, we have the basic cauldron, we have a cute monster. What I want you to do for a little bit, if you have a scratch paper beside you, I want you to just do a little bit of warm up. I was warming up earlier 
while we're doing our sound check, just basic warm ups of basic shapes, really, just circles, a little bit on the narrow side, skinny, a little bit on the wider, you know, um, letter C's, kind of like that, upside down, a smile, an upside down smile, a frown, do some straight lines, do some diagonal. And this is just warm ups. It's just to get your brain and your hands um, coordinated. It just kind of it makes you much more relaxed. It also puts you in the zone and in the moment. So try some wiggly lines like this, diagonal from the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top. It always helps me, like a little tiny C like this. You can do some scallop as well basic shapes like the stars, however you draw your stars, that's fine. Um, moon, hearts, just to get you started. It's a good practice to really start with a pencil, although I must admit that it's not always the case for me, especially when I'm just doodling things. For example, I have this little sketchbook and I just have little doodles. Sometimes I don't use my pencil and I just go straight with my marker, but this is my warm up notebook. So basically what I'm doing, what we're doing now, it's just what I'm doing when I'm doodling. But if I'm gonna work in an artwork for, or, or I'm working on an artwork like this, I usually start with a sketch first because with a sketch, a pencil, you can erase, you can go from there. And then it's much easier to correct things as you go along. Okay, so for a basic pumpkin, let me grab my notebook again. So you guys can just see a basic, what we're gonna do with the pumpkin. Can you imagine a pumpkin shape? Just draw the basic shape first. You get started with that basic shape so you don't get overwhelmed. And then you can start drawing from here, start in the middle of that, like this. And then you can start adding the layers of the pumpkin. And then you can just add that little stalk on top or how I like to do things. I start with this little hump. See that little hump in there? I just kind of gotta draw this shape right here. And then you add your lines. This is a much simpler way, but it looks like a pumpkin. So those are two ways that you can do it. Now you can play around with your shapes. Some are just, you know, more heavy in the bottom like this, kind of like a pear shape. And you can still add your lines in here. Like this, just add your little stop, okay? For faces, um, expressions and things like that, I really like the cute things, cute faces, two simple dots, with a mouth, like a letter U. Um, you, we can also make like two big eyes like this. So basically what I'm doing is that I'm just getting into the details. So when I draw, you have at least a little bit of an idea where I'm heading. So, because we have a lot to do today. That one, right? So those are eyes, mouth, like this. So sometimes I start with the letter U first and then I close it in. Sometimes I start with the line, the horizontal line, and then I add the mouth. So it, one way is it, there's no wrong, there's no right. As, as you go along here, you're really going to figure it out what works for you much better because that's what happened to me. Sometimes, you know, I, I attended workshops and things like that. But while I was doing the exercises, I figured other things that works for me much better. And to me, I think that that's, that's a better way to do it. Okay, and then we're going to make bones. So remember when we were practicing diagonal lines, like shapes, like letter C's, or incomplete circle, like this. And then cauldron, we're going to make like this really stretched oval. We're going to go bring it down a little bit like that. Yes, this is a Stalogy notebook. It's really smooth. I love it. It's an A6 size. 
And then we're just going to add this one. There. So basic things like that. And for a monster, this is really all there is to it. Look at this shape. Like that. And then we're going to add. So the way I do things, it's a little bit on the wider side or a chubbier side. Um, and then I just add this for the horn of the monster. You can play around with this. You can make it even wider. Um, you can make it like pointier if you want. Um, just use your imagination and do whatever pleases you. You can add lines or you can add um, dots in here, make it your own. And then for hands, look at how simple Kawaii stuff. You can make her arms this way. That's really it. And then you can add like eyes, squinting happy eyes. And then you can add the mouth. Instead of a straight line, sometimes I make it just slightly curved like that. So instead of just one straight, sometimes I make it just a little slightly curved. And then I go from here to there, that point, and then I shade this area. Then again, as you go along, I said, you'll play around with it. You want to shade the whole mouth. That's great too. Okay, so I think that's it. We can get started with the class. Woohoo, this is a little scary, of course, and like a blank white paper like this is always overwhelming in the beginning, but we got to start somewhere. So let's start with our pumpkins first, because that's going to be at the bottom of our drawing, right? So we have four pumpkins in there. So what are we going to do? We're just going to draw a basic one. I want my center pumpkin to be um, slightly bigger than the rest of them. And I want this. I'm just going to draw the basic shape that I want. And then I can correct it with my pencil later, play around with it. So basically, we're just going to work on our spacing for now. So you have your one pumpkin. I'm going to draw another pumpkin in here. So just draw the basic shape. So we just know the placement of where the pumpkins are gonna be, All right? So maybe we'll have one here. We won't do exactly what we have in the picture. We'll play around today, because feeling a little adventurous, All right? We'll have one here. So just do your basic shape. And when you're sketching, really try to go light with your drawing so you don't end up with a lot of mess. I have to try hard because I have naturally heavy hands. So I have to be really mindful and intentional of every stroke because I have heavy hands and really they end up like a mess sometimes. So I have three, five, okay? So we have five pumpkins in here. Now we're gonna try and start adding our second layer of sketching. I'm going to erase this one first and see how I love this kneadable eraser because I just roll it here. And it just makes my first sketch much lighter. And then, but still I have the frame or the body or this um, where we're going to follow along. So we have that base in there. And then I'm going to go add the layers now for a second. You won't see it. <laughs> Yes, basically not totally erase it. I know it's counterproductive, but it's going to really help you after, you know, after a while you're like, why am I doing this? I sketch the first base and then I erase again, but it really is very helpful. So now we have this, we're gonna work from here and then we're gonna start adding our layer. Remember that one hump that I created? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna make this one, one small tiny hump over there. And then I'm going to finish in. I really like that shape that I created in the beginning. So I'm just going to follow that along. And then go from there. And I have good news again. We're going to erase this again later <laughs> when you're ready to do your line art. Or if that, that's your choice. If you can just leave this as a sketch, if you like your sketch and it's a perfect sketch, then just keep that way. I like to add a line art, a marker after. This one, we're gonna do one hump. Remember that one hump? Here we 
there we go. Sometimes I add one if I want it a little wider. Okay, cover that again. And I think what helped me a lot from not being a great artist in the very beginning is because I started from scratch. So it's kind of like clearing out everything. Well, nothing that I know. <laughs> <laughs> learning again. So it's really helpful to understand that everything is just basic shapes. It just makes it so much easier when I think about it. It's just one stroke after the other, and it, then it becomes not so overwhelming. Now we're adding all the creases of our pumpkin. So there. So just follow that shape that you made. And if you want one coming in from the corner and then you have something in the middle, just try to go light again, please, when you're doing your sketch. And then just go one stroke at a time. And then I'm gonna add something in here in the middle also. See how my lines are slightly diagonal? It's not just one straight line. I feel like everything's just slightly curved. So from here, look at how I'm going to do it. Just connecting it and then here diagonal again, and then meet everything in the middle, kind of in the middle, like that. I go again here, All right? This again, like that. all our pumpkins. This. I personally take my time when I'm creating. Um, I really am very slow. I don't know, um, even when it's for work and all that, I really take my time. It's just, and also I just, I think it's just being very, um, it's so meditative. And it's like, I'm so much into the zone. I'm in, I'm into the mood. Okay, now we gotta add our stock. Play around with your stock. Some are much larger than the other. Some are much, you know, maybe facing to the left. Some are like pointing to the right. So play around with that. So just, I'm just gonna create that little two humps and then that, see? Again, one stroke after the other. Like that. Repeat the same thing. Trust me, when you start approaching things that way, one stroke after the other, whether it's lettering, whether it's doodling, um, it's going to be less overwhelming. All right, I'm not really happy with that shape, but I can erase it. That's the lovely pink pencil. I think it's a little larger on top, heavier on top. So there we go, much better. Okay, now we can start adding faces here. Play around with your face, play, play around with the mouth. Um, I think this one is going to be the spooky one. So the eyes are, triangle and how everything else it's not really sharp and pointy the way I create my lines everything is a little diagonal I'm just gonna shade that in okay and for the mouth we're just gonna make a big stretched oval again see like that I'm gonna add two teeth and then everything over here is going to be dark later. Let's just shade that a little bit. You don't have to because we're going to color that in and we're going to put in our marker in there to make it black later. And then this one is going to be peaking. So this eyes are on top. And I'm just going to add the lashes. I got to have the lashes in that mouth. Like when I showed you earlier. Add that. Okay, and now for this one, just gonna make a circle. 
slightly larger like that. And I'm going to make a half circle here because this is going to be our negative space. This is going to be left white later. And we're going to shade this later. We're going to put black in there. All right. And then I want this like cutie patootie. So I'm going to make like eyes close. We'll add lashes, and just a tinier mouth. This one. Same thing, I'll close that in. On um, this one, let's make this a little sassy. Kind of like what's going on here. So I just added those base for the eyes and add circle. It's kind of like, hmm, what's up? <laughs> what's going on, guys? So cute. All right. Now we'll stack things on top of this. Oh, we didn't make a mouth here. Let's make a mouth. Cute mouth. This one will close. Fade the whole mouth. Okay. We're going to make a tombstone on this side. We'll make the cauldron on this side. Okay. So remember that shape like this. So curve and then straight. Oops. Just like that. And I just added that layer on the side. Here. You can choose not to put in the cross if you don't want to. I'm going to leave that in because I'm going to put a broom over there later. Okay. So in the middle, I'm going to make my monster. Same shape like what we did with a tombstone but much narrower, or not much, just slightly like this. This is going to be the monster. And I'm gonna add the thorn. Oh, that looks like a muscle. What did I do with it? I wanna play around with it. Now it looks like <laughs> imagining things, other things. <laughs> I better add the face now. Looks like Pinky the bear upside down. Add the eyes. I'm really not happy with that. I'm gonna erase it. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna erase the horn. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna make it like that. <laughs> Oops. Now, what's gonna make this so much cuter and bring this to life? Or colors. Colors are just makes everything so much better. I love colors. I love bright colors. So here you can make adjustments. And that's the beauty of using a pencil. So you can make your adjustments in here. Then I'm going to add that on the inside, our eye. And then like what we did earlier, we left something for the negative. And shade that little bit. For the mouth, I'm going to make this one bigger like that. And then we're going to create like two teeth. And I'm going to put in a tongue in there. And then we're going to shade this in. Now you can play around with your monster. You can add some like spots way. Play around with the texture. This you can put in. And can be there or you can put it on the outside if you'd like. See my hands are getting heavier. And I'll add the hands over there too. And then let's play around with it. So I love the needable eraser because I can just reshape it. And then I can just erase it like that. And then for its horn, I'm just going to add in um, like this. Slightly slanted lines. Not exactly straight, 
make sure she's slightly slanted. Just eyeball the spaces. If you want it close together, the stripes, that's fine as well. All right, here we have that. And then we're gonna add a cute face for a tombstone like this. Okay, for the sides, let's finish up here first. We'll put the Ur cauldron over here. So remember when you're working um, in a, with a drawing, a notebook, a paper, a cardstock, it doesn't matter. Remember, don't forget that you can move this around. You know, don't feel like you're stuck with this because sometimes I forget it. And so what I do is I struggle with my arms and trying to move my arms and my hands around, move your paper. It's okay, just move your paper, which will make it easier. Like for now, I'm gonna do a cauldron. Instead of me trying to find this perfect spot, I am going to find a spot where my hands are comfortable and I have control, all right? So for a cauldron, remember this oval stretched like that. So we start with that. I'm going to go try and zoom in so we can see. All right. So from here, make a really, really, really tiny scoop or letter C, this one, then the opposite C, just like that. And then from here, make it large and wide because we're going to make its body like this. So kind of like the shape you made here, but this time think bigger. See, the more you do this, you will realize, oh, wow, it's just really the same shapes over and over. Some are just smaller than the rest. See there? And then from here, we're gonna put in another slanted curved line like that, just to meet in one corner. We don't have to shade in it because we can color that in later. Okay, and then I'm just going to add my face, thinking like this. Add in circles for like bubble, which brew like that. We can add in, remember that squiggly line that we practiced earlier? So I want you to make a squiggly line, play around with it. So let me practice with this. So try to make it like from here, like that. Do that, just free flowing in a scratch paper like this, like a letter S, a lot of letter S. Play around with the size, okay. So once you feel comfortable doing that, we're gonna do it over here in our artwork. Although remember you're using a pencil so you can really erase it anyways, look at that, okay? And then we're just gonna try our best to follow along. That shape that we created, just like not perfect, it's okay. We'll try again. Oh, it's turning so cute. Oh, well, God, we're running out of time already. We haven't started coloring. Let me, it's like broom, broom. <laughs> okay, let me have my broom. Okay, so we'll do the, we'll start a broom here. So let our monsters hold them in like that. So again, my lines are slightly curved instead of just one straight. Okay, from here, make this deep slant line, small, from here to here. We're gonna close this in, two lines. Oops, sorry about that. And then I want this broom to facing over here. So I'm gonna start with the base shape of the room like that and then from here kind of like adding this see another stroke 
play around with my size like that. Go down. I like stairs. See? And this time you can just add this. Your lines are much tighter. It's showing the visual is like it's packed in there. All right. And I'm going to add lines in here as well. All right. And here, we're going to add a ghost. Lastly, now we'll add some two candies over here on the side first. So for our candies, simple. Remember that oval, this one is not overly stretched, but just like this. See that one? Just touching the pumpkins and our tombstone. So just like that. And then I'm going to add All right. And then from here, adding this too for the packaging of our candy. That. And then add your face. Cute stuff. And I'll do the same to the right side. This one, I'll make this one a little square, but not really, but more rounded rectangle, I should say. It's like a rounded rectangle. All right, and then instead of like a scallop looking, I'm making it kind of like how we did our broom. See, when I get excited, everything is just much darker because I am losing focus of how much pressure I am applying. So when you're sketching, try to go light, think as a feather. I have my cute eyes, hello, hello. And this one. All right. I'm just gonna add sticky bones. Remember that two lines we did for the bones. These are big bones. Right. Add another one, much smaller. If you want to add to fill in some in here, so kind of like your squiggly lines. Okay, are we ready? Oh my gosh, I think we're ready to color. So now this time, what you can do is you can get your eraser, but you don't have the needable eraser, or you can do this later after we color. I'm just gonna make it just slightly lighter like this, because it's gonna be hard to erase a lot of mistakes later when we have our color down, because you don't wanna mess up your color. So really you wanna just make everything lighter because we're gonna do our line work later after we finish our coloring. So it can just be slightly lighter so we have just a shadow of everything. See, and now the camera's having a hard time trying to focus. Come on, okay, because it's really light. There. So if you don't have this kneadable eraser, you really, really need to get it because it'll make your life so much easier. And it's such, there's no mess. You know how the suds from the eraser, you don't have a lot of that. Eee, everything's so cute. You can frame this, you can scan this, turn it to digital. You can make your work um, like wallpapers. Um, you can print it, you can make it into stickers. So much fun things you can do. All right, now we have it, it's time to color. We have, I'm gonna have, prepare everything here, have my water brush. I'm gonna pick some colors, fun colors today. We have purple, we have some blues. Um, 
when you're picking colors, I love to have three values of the same color. Like for example, I know I like the shade of purple. I'll find a very light purple um, and then a medium shade of that and then a darkest one. You know how that's just how I work. And then I'll have some aqua colors like this blue. Of course, we'll have orange for our pumpkins. So we'll start with a very light, kind of like yellow. I'll start with a yellow and then I have a deep orange in here too. So like this. And then bring out your pinks because we're going to create like blush in here. And I'm also going to bring in like a really dark shade of blues in here. We have, I think this is, should be dark indigo. Yeah, I really love the dark indigo. All right, are we ready? Okay. So for the Albert Durer, to be completely honest with you, when I used this, I was just amazed because when I laid down the colors, I'm like, oh, wow, they're very bright, vibrant. They're so smooth. These are watercolors in the convenience of a pencil. You know, so it's like you don't have to keep dipping and all that. The way I do it, I'm like, when I applied it, like a regular colored pencil, I'm really going to just fill in that area where we want this color to be. So we have the yellows. I lay down all the yellows first and I'll try to go a little fast so we can actually finish our artwork because it's always fun when we see the result. So I'm just not being super careful, but I'm just laying down my colors because we know all of these are gonna be orange anyway and I want these to be light first. And then we'll add our shadows and highlights. Color them in. So if you are using a watercolor, you wanna lay down your first base, your lightest color first. So even though this is going to be pur uh, purple, I mean, this is going to be orange. I'm just having the yellow because some of the colors that we're not gonna put in Basically, when we color this in with the orange, I'm not going to be coloring in the whole image orange. That's a beauty of watercolor because it's so imperfectly beautiful. You can play around and just have, color it loosely. And it's kind of like super easy to create the highlights and the shadows. Now you have that yellow, right? Okay. And then I'm going to add the second medium color of orange here. Okay, so I am imagining my light is coming from here, the top right or just the top center. So everything's just kind of like shining down. So all my shadows or my darkest area of my coloring would be at the very bottom. So kind of like from the bottom to the me medium, middle part, not medium, middle part of that. So I'm just gonna shade it in just lightly as well. Just gonna create my shadows trying to go fast and <laughs> it might come messy, but like this. If you're using a watercolor pad, it's, it's so much better than using a regular paper, especially when you're working with a water-based, water-soluble product. It's just always recommended to use a paper that can hold water because it will just make your artwork so much better. See this one, I'm gonna put in a little bit of orange in here as well because this is where the two pumpkins are gonna to touch. So you imagine that there's gonna be a little bit of shadow in there coming from this big pumpkin. So I add a little bit of orange in there as well, right? And then I'll concentrate again at the bottom. This one, like this. For the sassy pumpkin too. <laughs> we'll add that orange. And I think this is good already. I'm like, oh, this is so good. I really love that texture of the colored pencil when I'm using watercolor pad. I really love that. Kind of like reminds me of the children book. And then the third deepest color. I'm gonna do that again. Start over here. Much smaller area. I'm going to cover a much smaller area than that middle shade. 
basically this is where that darkest shadow also is going to go. So that. I'm covering smaller than the middle, right? Remember here. And you'll see the magic of these pencils once the water touched it. This side. And if you're using a color, colored pencils, it's the same process also. You start with your lightest color, the middle, and then you can blend your pencils. I really love using colored pencils to color as well. There, okay. Now, I don't want to put um, water in there because if I start working in here, because we started at the bottom, it's going to be wet and I might end up smudging things. So I'm just going to color in my Munster real quick. I'm going to choose a light blue. So if you have any light blue, you can choose this one. Uh, this one is a light ultramarine. So I'm just going to color them in. And even the shade. Remember, I created like spots in here. So I'm just gonna lightly color that because we can darken that with other colors later, as long as we lay down our base color first. Just be careful in the corners where your two characters or images meet. I'm just trying to go a little faster. So I'm not being overly careful, but try not to do that when you're working with your own artwork. Draw the arms. Arms are there too, outside. Okay, and lay down the pink color for the tongue. It's fine, and then I'm gonna do a pink. And then leave one space and then change that into a aqua color, maybe yellow. Do the same here, pink. Use this one. This is the cobalt green. I really love this color too. With Faber Castell, when you're working with their products, you can find this in the Pit Artist Pen as well. So these Albert Durer pencils are available in many different sets, but there are a total 120 colors available. You can buy them individually as well, which is always super fun. And then we're going to add this color later with all the textures that I created inside. But since we have laid down that blue, I think I'll start adding the shadows maybe later, but we'll just create something in here so I know exactly where they're going to go later. So here, like what I said, our light source is on top. So everything's dark side is going to be at the bottom. So we're just creating this and then I'll add just a little bit of blue here. Just be careful. Going around the pumpkin, trying my hardest to be as careful as I can. There we go, and then the arm as well. All right, then I'm gonna grab a gray. I think I'm gonna grab a cool tone as well. So this is, should be the cool gray. Yeah, cold gray too. And I'll lay down my colors. See how I am holding my colored pencils? I don't go straight directly like this. Everything's slightly slanted because I wanna use um, the base of my color. And it's much easier because I can cover a much larger area doing it this way. But of course, when you want to go onto the very delicate side, then you can use the tip of the pencil. But if you want to cover a larger space, then use this and hold your pencil a slightly 45 degree angle from your paper. Yeah. 
and I'll add a darker gray over here. And like this. Yeah. And then here where all the pumpkins are, I'm just going to go around them with this dark. And this is where I'm going to use the tip of my pencil. And this is one great thing about the Albert Durer because it really holds the tip much better than the other pencils that I've tried before. I think when you're doing a lot of artwork, you really end up appreciating the small things like that, which just end up really <laughs> being a very big deal when you're working with a lot of artwork. It's kind of like you get what you pay for, so you're really paying for great quality. Like that. And same color for our cauldron. So I'm just going to lay down my gray. You'll see all the magic later when this, when the water touched this pencil, you'll be like, what? That was the same way. I'm like, I laid them down. I'm like, oh, really smooth, you know? And then the color and then the water touched it. I'm like, Whoa. it was super saturated. The colors were so vibrant. It was just, it was just really great. Just trying to be careful here. So you choose what kind of, um, potion color you want to color your potion it can be green you can make it purple you can make it pink it's going to be up to you you choose which colors you want you can even make your pumpkin not yellow or orange <laughs> you always have that choice and play around use your imagination and really just just make it your own and there blending already even with that water the colors are just blending so smoothly that will make this large darker here and remember this is just the first base where we can keep adding colors in here later but i'm just trying to go as fast as i can i think i'm going to make it like a really bright green okay so i'll lay down my green in here that here as well like what we did earlier we're going to find a much darker shade of green so just adding here And now we'll make pink for a candy. Notice how time just fly by when you're creating. And this is me every day when I'm working <laughs> and I'm working on an artwork. I wake up so early, I start working really early and then the day is just gone. And I'm just working and playing like a little kid. That's what art does when you're creating something. You're just so in the moment, you forget the rest of the day. And this time, I'm going to show you that you can start with your dark. And see, I've just colored it half. And I'm going to go in with a much a pink one, the lighter shade that we used in here. We'll make this a little ombre gradient looking. So I just colored in half purple and then we're going to shade it here. And then I'll do the same here, but I laid down all my pink colors. But I'm going to go in and do. So I'm just showing you that you can, one way is just not just the right way. You can play around with your supplies and figure out a way that works best for you. You know, when something works great for me, it doesn't mean that it's gonna work the best for you. So play around. Okay, I know we're running out of time, but I really wanna just color this in so you guys can see the shading, okay? I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit here. 
what we're going to do is we're going to start with the light colors first, but we're going to do start with the top so we can work our way to the bottom so we don't smudge your hands here. So we're going to start with everything from the top and work our way down. So we'll start with the body of our little monster. So we're just, I'm just laying down water, nothing. And this is where paper towel or a baby wipe will come in handy, especially if you're using a water brush like myself. Sometimes I get just too much water, more than what I want. So you can just dab as you go along. And then when you feel like the colors are not blending in anymore, that means you need more water. And I think that's the tricky thing about um, watercolors is that when is too much water and when is you need more water. So you need more water when, you're, um, when your artwork or when your pigments are not blending. But here, this is continuous water flow. And that's why I love working with water brushes because I don't have to keep dipping and dipping, but it takes a little bit of practice because like what I said, it's a continuous water flow. So understanding when, okay, I'm getting a little too much water more than I want, especially when you're working in with details like this, you don't want too much water in here. You don't really have to squeeze this water brush because the water just flows naturally, continuously, and not in a fast, manner because some of the water brushes I've used they're just a blot of water and it's just end up leaving me with a mess. Okay so we have that first base. I'm gonna do this blue first. See how I'm just following along with the stroke I created here? I'm not really getting all the colors in just slowly using the tip of my brush and just moving the colors and the pigments. And then stick with our first color first so we don't have to clean our brush. Like that. We'll do the same over here. All right. So we're creating this highlights naturally by just following along the stroke, leaving negative areas in the middle. Like that. So now you can clean your brush or like what I said, I have baby wipes. So this one is a little damp. So there's moisture in here. I can just clean like this and then move along to my next color. One day we're gonna develop, uh, we're gonna create a pink barrel because I love pink. <laughs> we're gonna have a pink barrel, water brush. They're always blue, come on. I'm just doing the same thing, just following in that stroke and leaving a little bit of negative space in the middle. We're creating a highlight in here. Just like that. No, this is an um, uh, alcohol free baby wipe, so it doesn't really affect anything in my artwork. This. So you just use paper or towel. Works great too. That. This one, I'm going to leave a little area over there on the top. Oops, look. When you're getting too much water, then you'll start blending in colors. And that's why it's a little tricky, like what I said, when you're working with watercolors. Okay, we'll do with this one. Here, I feel like I need more, more water. So. We have a little bit of that green tone left in my brush and make sure you clean your brush thoroughly. Just activates all these pigments in here. Maybe the lights are making it flushed, but they're very vibrant and saturated. But right now we're using a gray color, so it's not really, vibrant as we like. There. I'm just where we lay down all those dark colors. I'm just going to blend them very, very gently. And do it upward. And when you're doing a blending motion, try to do a circular instead of just one flat like this. 
try to go little, little by little and going circular like this. And so you're moving your pigments and you're moving your water and you're blending as you go along, you know? See how I'm just a circular motion like that. Starting with that dark. And you know what you can do is here, you can actually look at this. Pick up some colors and some pigments from the pencil itself and just start adding in your shadows like that. If you like. And I'll do this, I'll do this first, the great ones. So I'm starting with the light, just getting all the lights, that first base of color. Be careful because we have the green here now. So now I'm going to go in where the dark shade of gray and I'm just going to go blend it. Blend it. And when we do our line work, line art, everything is going to be much cleaner because we're going to cover up some of the messes from the watercolor. It's a great cover up. So from here, I'm just going to blend the light and the dark. I'm just trying to be careful because we have the green and I think like I'm getting a picking up a little bit of that green tone, which is not the end of the world. But if that's not what you want, then you can just clean your brush and then dab those colors out. And then see, I have the green tone. So I'm just gonna clean my brush just like this and then dab it and then wipe it like that. So clean your brush and do your green this time. Be careful because remember the rest of the area here is still wet. And that's the thing with um, watercolors is that wa the colors move with the water. So if there's moisture in your page and you don't want the colors to get in there, that color and that pigment is going to move along with that water. So be mindful where you lay down all your colors. Look how bright that green is. That's crazy bright. Oh, all right, and then color in your pumpkins. Start with your light. Start with my light. Look how much saturated once the color touched the pigments. Isn't that crazy? All right, but, and then I'll go with the dark. I'm not, I'm not being careful now. So have your baby wipe like this or your paper towel so you can dab your colors. If you feel like you have a little bit too much in there, more than what you want, like that. See, get some of those dark shades and areas where you don't want them. You can just pick up, pick up those pigments and clean it with your paper towel. This is it. How did yours turn out? We would love to see um, if you were creating along with me today. I'd love to see your artwork. Um, please tag us on social media. Make it with Michael's. I'm just going to do this and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to line art some of these because we are out of time. So we can just have one finished look, basically all the sketches that we created earlier. I'm just following along gently. I'm using a black brush pit artist pen. You can use a fine point in here if that's your choice. I love using brush pens because I love the thin and the thick lines I'm getting from a brush pen. And of course, it's not the brush itself that is doing it. It is the pressure that I'm applying while I am using my pen. And if you're curious to know how to work with a brush pen, we have lots of uh, preview 
previous classes with Michaels and Faber Castell. You can definitely check them out on Michaels YouTube channel. So you can maybe be fascinated with brush pens as well as much as I am. I love using them because you can see how I use look thin and then I can make it thick by the amount of pressure that I use applying it. And it just gives this certain character that I really love in my artwork and my drawings. See how everything is just back to life now with our line art. That. So when you're done with your coloring, Make sure to line your work with a marker, whether it's if you want another color, you can choose a darker purple. Sometimes I do that, but that's what it's going to look like. <laughs> that was so much fun. Hold on, let me say goodbye properly. Thank you, thank you so much everybody for joining. I hope that that was really fun. I really did have fun. Thank you, Michaels. Thank you, Faber Castell, USA for having me. And we would like to invite you again for our next week's class. Is it next week? We well, check it out, check out on the website. But again, my name is Leigh Ralston and I would love to see your creation and your artwork today. Please don't forget to tag us at Mommy Lay on Instagram, Faber Castell USA and Michael's Stores. Have a great weekend. Enjoy everyone. Until next time, stay creative and stay happy. Thank you.